In our first video, we learned what the MicroMIDI is and what it does. In our second video, we learned how to connect it to Ableton Live. And now we're going to learn how to use it to put together a basic patch. The first thing we're going to do is make sure Ableton is ready to receive audio from our system. I have my system plugged into input 7, so I'm going to select that as my audio source. I'm going to set monitor to in so that uh, any audio coming from my system is passed right out my output for me to hear. We already have a MIDI track configured with the micro MIDI as a destination. Another way that you might want to set up Ableton with the micro MIDI is to use the external instrument plugin. Uh, this lets you use external hardware in a similar way to the rest of your software instruments. And you can uh, save these settings as a preset for recall later. So you can set your MIDI destination, your audio input source, and you can uh, create any latency that you need to sync your system with your session. Now if I play a few notes on the keyboard, I can see Ableton lighting up that it's receiving MIDI, but we're not hearing anything because we haven't created a patch yet. I'm using an exclusively IntelliGel system here. As long as you have the micro MIDI, oscillator, envelope, filter, and VCA, you'll be able to follow along with me. Some of the naming might be slightly different, but it's all totally applicable. We're going to start by just taking the sawtooth output from the Dixie and run that directly into my main output. And my output module has a volume control on it, so I can use that to set the level that goes out to my interface. So if I turn that up, you can hear uh, Dixie outputting its sawtooth wave, and it's just sending out a constant tone. Uh, we can adjust the frequency, but it's always setting out a constant tone. So now let's go ahead and connect the pitch out from the micro MIDI. We're going to go into the one volt per octave input, and you can hear that the pitch just jumped. So now the micro MIDI is controlling the Dixie. So we can use a keyboard to, to uh, control the notes that the Dixie plays. Or if we go into Ableton, we can click in a little melody and just hit play. And so now Ableton is sending a melody to the Dixie. But because the Dixie is outputting a constant tone, there's no division between these notes. And so in order to create those divisions, to create volume shaping, we need to use a VCA we're also going to have to make use of the gate output. VCA stands for Voltage Controlled Amplifier. So basically, you're able to use a control voltage to shape the volume level of your signal. So we're going to remove that output from the Dixie and take the output from the VCA to our main output. We're going to take the sawtooth output from the Dixie and run that into the VCA. And now if I turn up this bias level on the VCA, I can bring up the volume of the Dixie. But I don't always want to reach for a knob to control the volume of my system, so we want to start using some voltage control. And we're going to make use of the dual ADSR right here. This is a dual envelope generator, and envelopes are unipolar control voltage shapes. So ADSR is a tack decay sustain release and that determines the contour or shape of the envelope. Uh, and that envelope is going to control the shape of the volume when you hit a note, when you, when you play a key on the keyboard. So in order to trigger the envelope, we're going to take the gate output from the micro MIDI and run that to the gate input on the dual ADSR. You can see it lighting up, uh, receiving those uh, gate signals from the micro MIDI from, from Ableton. And uh, so it's generating envelopes. So let's take uh, an envelope output with this red cable, run that into the CV input on the VCA. And as we increase the CV amount, we'll be able to hear the envelope controlling the volume of the Dixie. So I've got a fast attack now, which uh, and as I bring down the sustain, it becomes more percussive. As I increase the attack, the note comes in more slowly. And back to a more percussive sound. 
So now we have a basic patch going using the pitch and gate out from the micro MIDI, but let's make things a little more interesting by getting a filter involved. So I'm going to disconnect the Dixie from the VCA and I'm going to run that into the Polaris filter and I'm going to take the output from the Polaris and run that into the VCA instead. And so we need to bring up the input level on the Polaris and so now you can hear the sawtooth wave of the Dixie is being filtered by the Polaris. Let's just lower the range of the Dixie. So the Polaris is running in low pass mode, meaning that lower frequencies are passing through, higher frequencies are being filtered out at the cutoff point. So now I'm going to take a second envelope out of the dual ADSR. When the dual ADSR receives a gate, it duplicates that gate for both of its uh, envelopes. So I'm going to take the uh, second envelope out, I'm going to take that and run it into frequency modulation 1 on the Polaris. This envelope is going to control the filter cutoff, so it's going to create movement with that ADSR shape. So as I increase FM1 amount, you can hear it moving the filter around. In our next video, we'll be looking at the velocity mod and CC outputs on the micro MIDI, and we'll learn how to use those to create a bit more variety and movement in our patches. Thanks for watching.